Mariko Tamaki and Dan Mora put Bruce Wayne in jail as the hero turns himself in in a bid to throw the cops off both Batman and himself, allowing him to focus entirely on Mr. Worth and Vile without any distractions. Mariko Tamaki continues her murder mystery with an interesting flashback issue that doesn't really reach its full potential and falls short. Most of the issue is about Bruce meeting with a drunk guy in the drunk tank who knows he's Batman after having seen the hero without a mask on a few years prior. But that's the extent of that story. There isn't a piece where Bruce can use that as an opportunity to vent his mind or anything on someone he doesn't know or doesn't really know him and discuss why he's Batman. But the drunk just tells him the story story and wakes up the next day with no memory of it, so it literally went nowhere. It felt like a complete waste of an issue to actually not have something like that happen apart from getting to see the old blue and yellow bat suit again, but not only that, it all slowed down the, the overall plot as well considerably, which is a feat unto itself since that plot line is already beginning to feel like it's being dragged out quite a fair bit. Dan Mora, despite the dead end story, does more fantastic artwork and I enjoyed his colourful, action packed flashback along with the classic bat suit making a return. The final pages with Bruce in front of his burning house looked quite amazing and had some really awesome colouring by Jordi Belair. Detective Comics issue 1040 was quite the letdown of an issue, featuring a flashback moment that could have been used to build up Bruce's character again and kind of reaffirm why he is Batman, but instead slows down the overall plot. At least in the art department, the book has never looked better. I'm going to give this issue a 5 out of 10. Detective Comics issue 1040 heads to the Midtown precinct of GCPD where Bruce Wayne arrives to turn himself in, saying that he was in custody when the Fort Grave police station was blown up. A man complaining about his car being stolen while in Gotham on vacation recognises Bruce as he's cuffed and carted off, telling the man to enjoy the rest of his vacation. The cops discuss Bruce being brought in for questioning for the Worth case, thinking that they released him on that already but one knows they didn't, wanting the investigators called. But in the meantime, Bruce can sit in the drunk tank, with the worst thing he'll get is puke on his shirt. A cop knows that he won't get out till Sunday if he's lucky, but the others know he'll live. Bruce sits down and remembers Oracle's talk with him, wondering why he was turning himself in and what that achieves. Bruce says he can't have the cops chasing Bruce Wayne for Sarah and Lydia's murders and Batman for everything else. Barbara knows that she can make sure the police put together the pieces on the Worth murder so that Bruce can walk away a free man. Barbara gets to work putting together the case for the GC PD detectives, knowing it's all too easy as she makes a call to Jennifer regarding their patient. Jennifer says that Helena and Deb are both doing fine and are clear of any parasitic infection, which Barb is more than happy to hear. Jennifer heads into their rooms, finding that Helena is already gone and she took Deb's coat with her. Deb thinks that she was in a hurry as Jen contacts Barbara, telling her that Helena has escaped. Bruce meanwhile speaks with a heavily drunk man in the tank who knows he's Bruce Wayne, but not only that, he knows the man is Batman. Man as well. Bruce asks how he figured that out, so the man says that it was about five years ago when he was working for Jackie Pizza as their mascot, unwinding in the kitchens after a one night of work when he heard a crash. The man sees Batman and the Joker crash through the ceiling, causing him to run as their violent fight spills into his place of work. He tries to get to higher ground as he continues to hear the hero and villain battling each other. Scared for his life, the man makes it to the rooftop, hiding out in the darkness and keeping quiet. Just before he was about to pass out, however, he finds he isn't alone, seeing that Batman was on a rooftop as well. The man thought that Batman maybe could sense him with his bat radar or something, but he didn't hear him thanks to Batman having something in his eye. To get it out, Batman pulls down his cow, revealing his face to the man. Bruce asks if he's sure what he saw, but the man says he's not sure of anything, since he lives in Gotham City and he has a sister who thinks she's going to marry Batwoman. But Bruce being Batman makes sense. Bruce asks why, so the man tells him that he knows all of the horrible things that man had to live through, and he seems like the kind of guy who would want to make that horrible thing keep happening to him. Bruce goes to respond, but finds the man has fallen asleep. A detective outside quietly gives the penguin Bruce's uptown address as the villain asks if his men are up for a little delivery, and then after dinner they'll burn something down. In the drunk tank, the cops tell the inmates to stop sleeping, but the prisoners ask what the difference it makes if they are asleep or awake. One of the men knows it's Monday so they'll be let out soon as the drunken man awakens, wondering where the hell he is. Bruce watches him, causing the man to ask if he needs some help, apologising if he said anything to him while drunk last 
night, asking what day it is and swearing upon learning it's Monday. Bruce is soon let go and he tells the man it was nice meeting him as the detective apologizes for him since his alibi was proven to be true, but they'll be in touch if they have any further questions. Bruce knows he's happy to help, finding his phone has no battery while across town, his home burns down. At the Gotham shipyard, Penguin meets with Mr. Worth, learning that Vile is alive, or at least alive enough that their agreement and plan can go ahead. Worth knows that Bruce Wayne must die and Oswald knows that he will as Bruce finds his home has been blown up and set ablaze. Penguin knows that if they are to do this effectively, they need to cut off Wayne's protection fully, so Batman will be their first priority. Then he will serve Worth Bruce Wayne's beating heart on a silver platter. Worth is shown that Vile is alive, told that this monster will provide all they need to destroy Batman, since the jury has spoken.